بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أحسن الكلام كلام الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار So today we begin lesson number 9 in our series on the commentary on A'lam Sunnat Al-Manshura of Sheikh Hafiz Al-Hakami Rahimahullah and in the previous lessons uh, we looked at after we discussed Islam and Al-Islam Al-Aam, the general Islam and Al-Islam Al-Khas, which is the Islam of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we explained what are the foundations of that to single out Allah, to submit to Allah in Tawheed to comply with his obedience and to free oneself of shirk and its people after that we went into the Shahada what is the meaning of the Shahada and what are some of the evidences for the meaning of the Shahada from the Quran and what is what is the meaning of the Shahada in 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 summary it is that Allah Azawajal, it is istihqaq al-ibadah nafyu istihqaq al-ibadah and kulli ma siwa Allah ta'ala to negate that to negate the worship the right of worship for everything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to affirm it only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this leads us now as we said we discussed the meaning of the kalima this now brings us to the conditions the shurut of the kalima what are the conditions that are required for a person for him to enter into Islam uh, for, his, for his entry into Islam to be valid to be correct so we start with question number 19 question number 19 and so here the question is ما هي شروط شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله التي لا تنفع قائلها إلا باجتماعها فيه what are the conditions of the testimony that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah which do not benefit the one who says it except when these conditions are combined except when these conditions are combined in him in that person so the Sheikh Hafiz al-Hakami rahimahullah he said shurutuha sab'a there are seven conditions and then explains each one al-awwal al-ilmu bima'naha nafyan wa ithbatan Right. What is the first condition? It is to have knowledge of what it means. What does this statement mean when we say La ilaha illallah? To have knowledge, nafyan wa ithbatan. To know what you are negating and what you are affirming. To have actual knowledge of that. Right? Because many, many people say La ilaha illallah, but he does not know what, what he's affirming, what he's negating. He could be saying, there is no God, there is no ilah but Allah. And he may be thinking, like we have the Sufis who believe in wahdatul wujud, he might be thinking that he is saying nothing exists except Allah. Nothing exists except Allah. There is nothing in existence except Allah. Or he might be thinking that there are no gods other than Allah, meaning there's only one God that is worshipped. There are no other gods that are worshipped, which is false, because the gods which are worshipped are many. So what a person, what his knowledge is of the meaning, then a, a condition for a person to enter into Islam and for it to be valid is that he must have knowledge of what it means, nafyan wa ithbatan. Second, athani istiqanul qalbi biha. Istiqanul qalbi biha. Second is that the heart must have certainty. The heart must have yaqeen, must have certainty in relation to the meaning. Right? In relation to the meaning, which is in the first condition. He must have certainty that this meaning is true. Mm -hmm. 
that it is it is true. A thalith al inkiyadulaha vahiran wabatinan. The third one is to comply to comply with what this kalima requires from you inwardly and outwardly inwardly and outwardly and inshallah we're going to discuss these conditions in a bit more detail from the speech of the scholars in a short while but we have to understand that these conditions these conditions have been extracted by the scholars from the texts to enable us to distinguish between what is valid Islam and who is a Muslim and who is not a Muslim. Let me give you an example. There are many amongst the people of disbelief, there are many uh, kuffar, uh, for example the mustashriqeen from the, the orientalists and other people, they study Islam and they read the Quran and they, re they read the ahadith and they know exactly what the Qur'an is saying just like the Kuffar of Quraysh they know exactly what the Qur'an is calling to and they understand its meaning and likewise they are convinced that it is true they are convinced that it is true they have certainty that this, this is true however do they have inqiyad? do they believe that I am now bound to act upon I accept that I am bound to act upon this meaning. Like, is there inqiyad? Inqiyad, what does inqiyad mean? Inqiyad means compliance, to comply inwardly and outwardly. Right? So these people do not comply, right? A mustashrik, orientalist. He's learned the Arabic language, he's read the Quran, he's, you know, translated things, he understands the principles of fiqh, he understands, he knows all these things. But does he, does he believe that he is obligated to comply with what he's understood and that this is binding upon him? And does he accept that? No, he doesn't. There's no inqiyad. Right? But he will speak. He will speak. He will speak about this is the kalima and this verse means this. And in usul, he will speak about Islam. These people, you find them. And they travel to the Muslim world and they give lectures to Muslims and they speak with all this language. And they speak a hadith, and someone would think, MashaAllah, this man is a Muslim. And this, this happens, this man is a Muslim, he's so knowledgeable. But he's a kafir, and he hasn't entered into Islam. All right? So these conditions, it is very, very important that we understand that these conditions, when we understand them, that they help us to understand what is, you know, when a person is in Islam, and when a person is not in Islam. It's very, very important. Al-Rabi' uh, Sorry, Al-Thalith Al-Inqiyadu Laha Zahiran Wa Batinan The third, obviously, you mentioned that it is to comply with it, the meaning Zahiran Wa Batinan, inwardly and outwardly. Al-Rabi' Al-Qabulu Laha Fala Yaruddu Shay'an Min Lawazimiha Wa Muqtadayati Wa Muqtadayati Wa Muqtadayatiha Again, which is acceptance, Al-Qabul To accept it and not to reject anything from, from its necessities, from what it requires from you, and from its necessities, right? So for example, you understood the meaning, La ilaha illallah, nothing has the right to be worshipped except Allah. You know that from its lawazim, is that you have to abandon what you're worshipping. You have to abandon what you're worshipping. And from its muqtadayat, uh, from its requirements, is that you have to bow to Allah, you have to prostrate to Allah. And you have to worship Allah, right? And that you accept that this is obligatory upon you, right? So you have to, this qabul has to be there, that you accept that you are bound to act upon this. Al-Khamis al ikhlasu fiha, to be sincere, to be sincere in this kalima and what it requires from you. So this now obviously is major shirk and minor shirk, that you have to be sincere uh, in, in, in entering. Asadis as sidqu min samim al qalbi la bil lisani faqat. Sixth, it is truthfulness. It is truthfulness from the 
recesses of the heart, right? From deeply inside the heart, not just with the tongue. Okay, so this condition, who does it exclude? It excludes the hypocrites. Because a person can say with the tongue what he does not truthfully believe in his heart. So now we know the difference between Islam and, and you know, Iman and Nifaq. Because inwardly there has to be Sidq. There has to be, there has to be truthfulness. Al-Mahabba, Al-Mahabba tu laha as-sabi' Al-Mahabba tu laha wa li ahliha wal muwalatu wal mu'adatu li ahliha li ajliha afwan, li ajliha Seventh is to love it and its people to have love for it and its people and to have loyalty and disloyalty for it for it on the basis of it Right, so these are seven conditions because obviously if you accept the meaning and you love the meaning, you act upon the meaning, you comply with the meaning, it necessitates that you dislike what opposes the meaning. So you have voila, you have loyalty and you have disloyalty on the basis of this of this kalima. Now the Shaykh, we start with Shaykh Ahmed al Najmi's Sharh or his commentary, first of all. And the Shaykh gives a general general remark without going into detail about any of the conditions. He gives a general remark and he gives us, he says, العلم بمعناها نفيا وإثباتا لا يكون نافعا إلا إذا استيقن العبد بقلبه وأيقن به أما إذا علم ولم يعمل فلا ينفعه فلا فلا ينفعه ذلك العلم. He says knowledge of the meaning, both in negation and affirmation, this will not benefit a person, right? So if you know what the kalima means, la ilaha illallah, you understood it correctly. Only Allah has the right to be worshipped and everything else, it's, you know, it doesn't have any right to be worshipped. This will not benefit you unless your heart is convinced, is certain that this you know, is, is true. And you, are, you, you have conviction in this meaning. And likewise, if you have knowledge and this conviction, but you do not act upon it, you do not act upon it. And we shall see shortly that the, the, the kuffar of Quraysh... They actually had this conviction. They were convinced in their hearts that this kalima is the truth. Right? So this will not benefit either. فَلَا يَنْفَعُهُ ذَلِكَ الْعِلْمِ And he says, كَمَثَلِ جِمَاءَةٍ مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ Like we see, there was a group amongst the kuffar. كَانُوا عَالِمِينَ وَمُسْتَيْكِنِينَ بِقُلُوبِهِمْ They were, not, they had knowledge and they had conviction in their hearts. أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ لَكِنَّهُمْ جَحَدُوا ذَلِكَ كَمَا قَالَ, كما قال تعالى وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًا But, you know, they knew that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, but they rejected that just as Allah says in the Qur'an, Allah the Exalted, they were convinced in their, in their souls, they were convinced in their souls, but they وَجَهَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْكَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًا But they rejected them out of oppression, out of zulm, wrongfully, they rejected them, and out of wanting to have authority, to be, to be you know, uppermost, and to, to be high in the land and have authority. Now, the Sheikh mentions a qissa, a story, and he says, وَذَكَرَ uh, الزُّهْرِ Az Zuhri mentions that Abu Sufyan bin Harb, Abu Sufyan, who was a disbeliever for a long time and he accepted Islam right at the very end. Wa Aba Jahl, wa Aba Jahl bin Hisham, wa Al Akhnas bin Shariq. Right, these three men: Abu Sufyan, Abu Jahl, and Al Akhnas. They came out one night in order to listen from the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And he was praying in the night in his house. So they came out and uh, each man, they came and they took their own seat or position from which to listen. And each of them did not know the other one, right? So they did not know that the, where the other one was or the other one had, had, had come out. So they spent the night listening to what he's reciting until Fajr. Till Fajr. Then they, then they, Separated. Then they separated. When Fajr 
uh, came, they left and it happened that they met on the path. And then they began to speak and they began to rebuke each other. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Right? And some of them said, do not come back. Don't come back. Right? So they said to each other, they found that each of them had come to listen. And so they said, look, don't come back again. Don't come. Because they were fearful that, well, I came. And he knew inside his heart he was being affected. So he said to the other one, make sure, do not come tomorrow. Because he feared that if I'm affected, he's going to be affected. Right? So this is what they were saying to each other. Do not, you know, do, do not la ta'udu. Don't, don't return back. Um, because, and also because if some of the people... So if the foolish people see you, if the fools amongst the people see you, they're going to, you know, it's going to put in his soul something. He's going to think, what are these people doing here? Listening to Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa at this time of the night. Is there something going on? Uh, right? So they said that to each other. Then they left until it was the second night. Then all of them came back again. Right? Each of them came back again. And to, to his place where he was the first day. And they spent the night listening until it came to Fajr. So then they left, they split, and again, on the way back, they met on the path again. So some of them said to the, the others, what they said the first day, on the first day. You know, don't, don't return, don't come back again, don't come back again. And then they went. Until the third night, each man came back again and took his place again. And they spent the night listening again. Then when Fajr came, they went, they split, and they, you know, they, they went and they were gathered again on the path they met. And so some of them said to the others that we will not leave here until we make a pact, until we make an oath with each other that we will not return again. So this time they took, they made like a, an oath or a treaty with each other, like a pact. And, you know, to, to make sure that they're, not going, that they're not going to come again. So then they departed, and then when the morning, and then in the morning, when Al Akhnas bin Shariq, when he came, when, when he got up, he took his staff, then he went, and he came to Abu Sufyan in his house, and he said, said to Abu Sufyan, Tell me, O oh Abu Hanzala, what's your view about what you heard from Muhammad? What did you hear? Tell me what. What's your impression? What's your view? What did you hear? So he said, O oh, Tha'laba, O oh, Abu Tha'laba, by Allah, Wallahi, Lakad Simitu Ashia, Arifua, Wa Arifu Ma Yuradu Biha, Wa Samitu Ashia, Ma Araftu Ma Naha, Wallama Yuradu, Wallama Yuradu Biha. So he said, By Allah, I, I heard things which I know, I, I recognize. And I know what is meant by them. I know what is intended like by those ayat, by what he heard. And I heard things, I don't know their meaning. And I don't know what they, what they mean. I don't know what's intended by them. So Al-Akhnas said, he said, and, wa ana halafta bihi. and said, me likewise, by the one through whom you have, you have sworn, you know, by Allah. Then he left him, on, then, and then he came to Abu Jahl. So, right, so this is, um, you know, uh, this is um, Al-Akhnas. So now he went to Abu Jahl, and he went to his house, and he said, Oh, Abu Al-Hakam, what's your view about what you heard from Muhammad? So Abu Jahl said, what did you hear? What did you hear? And then so they both began to, you know, uh, you know they, they began to say, that we, meaning our tribe, and Banu Abd Manaf, we competed with each other in terms of, you know, nobility. That we, were, we used to compete with each other. So if they fed, if they fed people from nobility, like at the Kaaba, then we fed people. Because this is from the noble manners. For Hamalu. So they carried and we carried, possibly referring to the, to the, to the stone. And So they gave and we gave, right? So they're all speaking about, like between the two tribes, how they were competing in terms of, you know, uh, bravery, generosity, you know, and things like that. 
until hatta idha tajazayna ala al rakib wa kunna kafara say rihan until we became like you know we became like competing race horses with each other competing with each other qalu then they said so after all of this here we are two tribes who are competing in this manner like a race then they banu abd munaf what did they say they said minna nabiyun ya'tihi al wahyu min as sama so they said to us from us now has come a prophet and revelation comes to him from the heaven fa fa mata nudriku hadhihi so when will we comprehend this when will we when will we grasp this wallahi la yu'minu bihi ahadan la nu'minu bihi wallahi la nu'minu bihi abadan wa la nusaddiquhu fa qama anhu al akhnas wa tarakahu and then they said by allah we shall never believe him ever nor shall we you know uh, accept him and treat him as being truthful and then al akhnas went and then he left him what does this story tell us it tells us that these three you know al akhnas and abu jahl abu sufyan who was a non muslim at that time they clearly understood that this was if if a prophet has come from their tribe what does it mean for our tribe we lose the authority right we lose position we lose status we lose all that this you know honor this sharaf and this that that we have amongst us so they knew the they knew the implication so they heard the quran they knew what it is saying they understood many things they knew what it required from them right they they knew the truth and then because of authority and you know things like chivalry and honor and things like that like tribal tribal honor and power and things like that they rejected and they said they swore that they are never ever going to believe him just like in the ayah that you saw the ayah which is referring to fir'aun and his people wa jahadu biha wa staykanatha anfusuhum dhulman wa uluwa that they rejected the signs even though their souls were convinced thereof and they did so out of dhulm like this is out of oppression and wrongdoing and out of seeking authority and highness upon the earth so what is so what is important from this story al muhim the sheikh says rahimahullah al muhim an al ilm wal yaqeen la yanfa'u illa ma al amal right that knowledge and certainty knowledge and certainty will not benefit except with action you have to act upon what you know and you can't allow other things other considerations loss of power or lust for power loss of honor because you feel that you're going to be demeaned or lowered or something these things cannot come in the way of you and acting upon your knowledge and certainty so those falladhina staykanu bi anna allah huwa al ilahu al haqq wa anna muhammadan rasulullah aw musa rasulullah aw isa rasulullah aw ghayra dhalik lakinhum lam ya'malu la yanfa'uhum la yanfa'uhum istiqa istiqa istiqanuhum la yanfa'uhum istiqanuhum so those people who are convinced and that allah is the true deity and muhammad sallam is the messenger of allah and musa is the messenger of allah uh, or, or isa is the messenger of allah like in their respective times other than that but they do not act then um they will their certainty will not benefit them wali hada yaqulu allah azza wa jal for this reason allah azza wa jal he says he mentioned the same ayah again wa jahadu biha wa staykanatha anfusuhum dhulman wa uluwa this is about fir'aun and fir'aun and his people but it applies also to every person who fits into the same category so amongst the kuffar today there are amongst the yahud the nasara uh, from the mustashrikeen from the orientalists and other than them who enter into this ayah because they are convinced when they read the quran when they read the prophetic sunnah they are convinced in in their hearts but it is kibar it is other things it is pride right other things that 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 makes them not you know act upon what they know فَلَا بُدَّ مِنَ الْإِقْرَارِ بِالشَّهَادَةِ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَلَا بُدَّ مِنَ الْعَمَلِ عَلَى ذَلِكَ So therefore it is necessary to affirm, to corroborate, 
the testimony that none has a right to be worshipped except Allah, that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and it is necessary to act upon that. So this is the speech of Sheikh Ahmed Al-Najmi, rahimahullahu ta'ala. And so next we move to uh, a brief commentary of, uh, or a uh, commentary upon each of these conditions from Sheikh Saleh Al-Fawzan, hafizahullah ta'ala. Uh, these are just general brief conditions, like a brief explanation of each one. And he says, La ilaha illallah. So when we make this statement, Laha ruknan. Laha ruknan. It has two pillars. And they are nafi wal ithbat. So there are two pillars to this statement, and nafi wal ithbat. When it is said to you, if someone says to you, What are the arkan of La ilaha illallah? You say they are nafi wal ithbat. Meaning you are negating, that's the first part, La ilaha. And you are affirming, that's the second part, Al ithbat. And as for, so these are, these are the arkan. So the arkan are different to the shurut. Right? When we speak about la ilaha illallah, there are a number of things that we have to grasp. There is the ma'na. There is the ma'na. What's the broad meaning of this kalima? The ma'na. Then what are the arkan? What are the pillars? It is nafi wal ithbat. Then what are the shurut? What are the conditions, which is what we are discussing now? Then finally, what is the muqtada? Muqtada. Muqtada meaning, okay, so we've understood all this. What now does it necessitate from you? What does it demand and require from you as, as a person, as an individual? What does, it, what does it require from you? That's the muqtada. And so the scholars explain all of these uh, things. And so here we are discussing the shurut, the conditions. And as you know, the scholars, they, they summarize all of the conditions in a line of poetry, which the Sheikh mentions. Um, you know, there are uh, seven conditions. A person will not benefit. Uh, this kalima will not benefit except with these conditions. And some people, they organized it in a poetry. And they said, Ilmun, yaqeenun, wa ikhlasun, wa sidquka, ma'a muhabbatin, wa anqiyadin, wa alqabooli laha. Right? What is it? It is knowledge, and it is certainty, and it is sincerity, and it is your truthfulness <coughs> alongside love and compliance and acceptance of it. Right? So I mentioned seven conditions. So now the Sheikh is going to give us just a brief, brief explanation of each one of these conditions. So he says, فَالْعِلْمْ ضِدُّهُ جَهْلْ Right? And notice, and this is something that we are going to discuss also further, that these conditions are explained through their opposites. They are explained through their opposites so that there is no confusion about their meaning. Why? Because sometimes we might confuse between some of these conditions. So when we negate the opposite then the meaning of what that condition is and what it is saying becomes more clear to us right so the first al-ilm fal-ilm ضدhu al-jahl so the first is knowledge its opposite is ignorance right so the one who says la ilaha illallah bi lisanihi wa yajhal ma'naha the one who says it with his tongue but is ignorant of its meaning then this will not benefit him. The, the la ilaha illallah will not benefit him. And as for certainty, wal yaqeen, kad yakunu indahu shak. A person could have shak. Right? So its opposite is shak, doubt. You could be doubtful. Is it really true? Is there really only one deity worthy of worship? Right? And, and so you, you, you lack that certainty. Because some people... The Shaykh says, they know its meaning, but they have shak. They're not, they're not certainty. They don't have certainty. So his knowledge is not, is not authentic, correct, valid. So he must have certainty in la ilaha illallah. Like for example, you might invite a Nasrani. For example, you explain to him what la ilaha illallah, what it means that none, absolutely none, except Allah alone, has the right to be. So he, he's understood 
he's understood what you are saying, which means Isa can't be worshipped and, you know, uh, you know the other things they, they, uh, have to be abandoned, the worship of other things have to be abandoned. He knows all that, but he's thinking, well, okay, I understand it, but is it really correct? Is it really correct? Is it really? He's not, he's not convinced that they shuck, right? So in the presence of that shuck, then there cannot be valid entry into Islam, right? The shuck has to be, it has to be certainty that this is the truth. Then he says, وَالْإِخْلَاسْ ضِدُّهُ الشرك. So obviously the opposite of ikhlas is shirk. Some people say, la ilaha illallah. But, wala yatruk as shirk. So now this is not sincerity. Right? You, you, you haven't abandoned actual shirk that you are committing, worshipping others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, مثل ما هو الواقع الآن in the عباد القبور Like what you see with the grave worshippers. They say, la ilaha illallah. But it will not benefit them because from its conditions is to abandon shirk. So here, al-ikhlas, ضده, al-shirk. Here, sincerity, the opposite is shirk. Then he says, was-sidq, was-sidq, ضده, al-kathib. Truthfulness, the opposite of which is lying, lying. Because they say, when they say, la ilaha illallah, يقولون, la ilaha illallah, لكنهم كاذبون في قلوبهم. But they are, they are liars in their hearts. And obviously this is the state and condition of the hypocrites. Uh, because, well, what is it? لا يأتقدون معناها So they're not truthful in believing in the meaning. They might understand the meaning. They might even be convinced of the meaning. But do they really believe it? Are, are, are they truthful with respect to it? And this is why uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said uh, uh, in Surah Al-Munafiqoon, إِذَا جَاءَكَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ قَالُوا نَشَّدُوا إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ اللَّهِ When the hypocrites come to you, they say, indeed, you are the messenger of Allah. وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ لَرَسُولُهُ Allah knows, indeed, you are his messenger. وَاللَّهُ يَشْهَدُوا أَنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَكَاذِبُونَ And indeed, Allah testifies that the hypocrites are indeed liars. So they came to the messenger and said, we believe, we believe, we believe, but they are لِهَذِهِ الْكَلِمَةِ That you love this kalima kalima that you love this kalima uh, and you be a wali you be a ally to its people you are you are an ally to its people and as for the one who does not love it or does not love its people then it will not benefit him Right, so you can't you can't have all these other prior conditions. You know the meaning. You're convinced it's true. Right, you are uh, you're certain. You have sincerity. You abandon shirk. You are truthful in what you're saying, but then you 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 know you um, uh, you you do not love its people, and you love other than its people. You have an alliance with other than its. It doesn't make sense because it should follow that your mahabba should follow on from that. The next one, walinqiyad, which is compliance, and this is ضِدُّ الْإِعْرَاد وَالْتَرْك ضِدُّ الْإِعْرَاد وَالْتَرْك This now, the opposite of which is just to turn away and to abandon, meaning that you know all of this. You've understood the meaning, you're certain that it, you are certain that it's true, you have conviction, you have ikhlas in the sense you've abandoned shirk, you don't worship any other deities, and you are truthful in what you say, but from this point, that's it, you just think, well, okay, just turn away, it doesn't concern you, I'm not bothered, not interested, and you find people like this, there are, there are people like this, I've met people like this, they, they know the meaning, they know, they're convinced that that meaning is true, they know that they don't, can't worship anything, so they abandon worshipping anything, and obviously they are truthful in the sense that, you know, that, that they are truthful in, in when they say what they say. But then from that point, they completely turn away from everything and do not comply with it. And that could be for different reasons. Right? So one person that, that I met who's on the verge of accepting Islam is that, well, he can't let go of the type of food and the drink and the lifestyle that he's you know living so he can't commit to it he can't commit to that to that life 
of compliance, right? So he's just going to ignore everything and make himself forget everything and turn away and just continue with his life, choosing deliberate ignorance, meaning meaning non-compliance and just forgetting, right? So the, so now you are not complying, right? This, even though he says everything else, yes, it's la ilaha illallah. I understand what it means. I'm convinced it's the truth. You know, I, I will not worship anything besides Allah. I, truthfully, I, I, I say it truthfully. But it's, I can't, you know, he will not comply with anything because it doesn't. So this, this, is, not, this is not Islam. This person has not entered into, into Islam. Al-Qabool, Al-Qabool al-Munafi lil-Radd. Right? Bi-anna la taruddha. شيئاً من حقوق لا إله إلا الله وما تضل عليه بل تقبل كل ما تضل عليه لا إله إلا الله تتقبله تقبلاً سهيهاً Here now this is acceptance the opposite of which is rejection So here you do not reject anything of the rights of Allah سبحانه وتعالى of the rights of لا إله إلا الله of the rights of this kalima and what, what this kalima indicates Rather, you accept everything that this kalima indicates. Why? Because this kalima um, indicates many things. There are there are muqtadayat, right? That you accept the halal, you accept the haram, you accept the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallam. And so whatever comes to you, you make qabul, right? Of, the, of, of whatever the kalima necessitates. But if you reject something, well, yes, I accept everything, but I can't accept this. This thing I don't understand. This don't, thing I can't accept. For example... He might say, he might believe that inheritance for a woman is half that of the man. Well, with this I can't accept it because I, I just can't accept this. No. Uh, this now is a rad. This is a rad. Right? If you make a rad of anything which is from the muqtadayat, the necessities, that which follows on from the kalima la ilaha illallah, then this cannot be, this, you know, this cannot, this, this negates. Uh, your your Islam and your it you know, doesn't enter you into into Islam. It prevents your entry into Islam. And some of the scholars, as you know, uh, have added an, another condition. Not all scholars, but some of the scholars, and they say wazida wazida thaminuha al kufran al kufran wa bima ma al ilahi min al ashai qad ulliha. So he says, and the third one has been added, which is to reject and to disbelieve in whatever has been associated, whatever has been associated with um, other other things which have been worshipped. Right? To reject in whatever has been Ascribed or associated with Allah, with the only one deity, of things which have been, uh, you know, uh, given devotion and worship. So, what does this mean? This is the eighth condition. What is it? It is al baraatu min al shirki, fala yakunu muwahidan hatta yatabarra min al shirk. So, this now is al baraa min al shirki wa ahlihi. This is like another condition that you must have al baraa. From the Mushrikeen. And uh, he mentioned the ayah وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ لِأَبِيهِ وَقَوْمِهِ إِنَّنِي بَرَاءٌ مِمَّا تَعْبُدُونَ When Ibrahim said to his people, to his father and to his people, Indeed, I am free and innocent of whatever you, of whatever you worship. So these are the shurut of La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah Meaning right, I, I'm, I'm, I Inwardly I, uh, This is a bit like Qabul as well This all 